So here's part three of our three-part episode where we're having some conversations with Dr. Jeff Rothstein. It's been great having him on the show to finish up here. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the issues that we might be having in veterinary medicine. Kind of our, maybe our last big topic. Um, In my last few episodes of the podcast, I've been talking about some of the problems in vet medicine. And I don't know that there's potentially new problems, but at the time of the pandemic, I felt like that worked as a catalyst to really speed stuff up and show us some of the issues um, that might be in, in vet medicine. And it brought it to the forefront. And I, I kind of like that because I'd rather deal with it now than when it's worse. That's just my mentality. And and I know there's a lot of factors and maybe even different problems to talk about, but uh, one of your articles, Shortage of Veterinary Professionals, Maybe a Blessing in Disguise for Professionals, I found that one really interesting because I read it about the time that in Kentucky we had a conference, um, all the large animal vets got together, and and well, there's very few of us now, so I was hoping that a meteor didn't hit the building and take us all out, but I found it really interesting, and we talked about the large animal shortage. We talked about small animal to a point, too, because there's issues there as well, but one of the things I kind of took away is could we set a new standard now that there's so few of us, and is that maybe what we should do now, or set that new standard, or how I, how might we go ahead and set that standard? And that might be a broad question because there's so many different issues affecting vets, but, you know, could you maybe, what, what are some of your thoughts on that or even some of your questions on it? Sure. And uh, large animal, I think, is a, a different beast, so to speak, <laughs> you yeah. know, where there probably is, you know, Undoubtedly, you know, not enough vets to go around. You can argue, um, and again, just my 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 viewpoint, uh, not so much like an MVP thing, but um, you can argue, you know, is there truly a shortage of veterinarians, or are we just, you know, relatively inefficient? You know, so that's and that inefficiency could be in a number of ways, right? We remember when we used to talk about there's a clinic on every corner, and so you know, for a long time, I think you could say, "Wow, we got all these different clinics, and people are all working, you know, three quarters of their capability." So you're just not very yeah. efficient. So um, in this scenario, I think now the you know. And I don't even, I think even the AVMA, there's a discussion about mid level practitioners. And actually, LMU, I think, is one of the schools. Maybe that's, you know, look closely at that if I'm correct. But, you know, what if we had that PA or nurse practitioner? And I don't think that the AVMA is particularly endorsing it because I don't know that they necessarily think that there's, you know, this huge shortage of veterinarians. I come at it a little bit different going back to my MBA thesis was um, basically that, and again, I talked about my dean coming in and saying, hey, you know, there'll always be a job for a good veterinarian out there. Um, But my take just from simple math was, hey, if we got $5 billion over 50,000 veterinarians, we're guaranteeing $100,000 of you know, revenue per veterinarian, what if we had that same uh, 50,000 veterinarians, but $10 billion of, of revenue? Um, and so then you're, you know, there's you know twice that revenue to go around. I think the real missing link, though, is, um, you know, from an inefficiency standpoint is, you know, how we use our teams, how we use the PIM mm-hmm. systems and, um, the supply and demand aspect, um, and again, as an employer, you don't love it, but there is wage inflation besides the regular <laughs> inflation going on. Um, those needs for, you know, for veterinarians and veterinary staff is pushing those wages up. So if I'm just looking at the, you know, veterinary team population and saying, wow, you know, we probably, 
lose a certain amount of people in this profession because of the yeah. compensation aspect. How do we get closer? And I use the um, bar of like a pediatrician and even I went and spent some time in a pediatrician's office, a big practice. And I was like, yeah, you know, it, it would be nice you know, we don't have to make as much as an orthopedic surgeon, but it'd be nice to be somewhere in that level of other health professionals. And so yeah. um, how do we get there? And some of it is, you know, splitting that pie between less <laughs> yeah. veterinarians. And so, it, I mean, you are seeing, you know, wages are going up. And so we have to solve the you know, the staffing issue and, and also just as you worked as a technician, um, it's a blessing and a curse, I think, a lot of times because I hadn't done that. And so I was um, really not the one putting in the catheters and, and, yeah, yeah. and pulling bloods and stuff like that. And that made me more productive. And I didn't mean to, you know, be lazy, so to speak, but I think it's really easy to fall back on those yeah. skills. And so more than anything, I think is uh, learning to be super efficient and, and pricing our, you know, services appropriately. So at the end of the day, docs and, and team can make a better uh, compensation and somewhere in the realm of that be, I think is your budgeting out care so wellness plans and then on top of that you know leaning more you know towards pet insurance and one of the things that one of the gurus and that was involved in pet insurance for a long time said what's the difference between a, a DVM's salary and a medical doctor's salary and it's insurance, even though, you know, we <laughs> yeah. don't, you know, we look at insurance and the human side and we say, oh, what a mess. Um, yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, it has allowed, uh, you know, the guys in human medicine to make a far better wage than, you know, uh, the DVMs. And, and the problem gets back to is that now, you know, for a lot of my buddies that own their own practice, they had, you know, three streams of income like you're seeing. So, you know, you had your compensation mm -hmm. for veterinarian, so that production part, you had the profit of the practice, and a lot of times the real estate piece, you know, um, got in there. So a little bit kind of like a dentist type of model, you know, mm -hmm. and so you ended up, even though maybe your doctor's salary wasn't phenomenal, the total piece of it wasn't so bad. Yeah. Now, if you're just an associate, and I don't mean just an associate, but <laughs> yeah. if that's your, if that's all you plan to be, then um, you know you've got to ultimately be a good producer. And so I think that's where the mentoring comes into play, mm -hmm. and that mentoring can be also how to be more efficient, charge appropriately, mm -hmm. not give things away. But those are the, I think, challenges that you know, that we face, and where. Hopefully we can take an advantage of, you know, maybe the so-called, you know, shortage of veterinarians. Yeah. And I, cause I've kind of the same as you, uh, when I talk to students, I'm like, I don't always know that there's a shortage because when we talk to them, cause a lot of students coming from LMU might be interested in large animal. And we talk about some of the problems and it's like the regions where there is a shortage of large animal vets. There's also not the compensation there, rural, poor areas. You need to be able to pay back your student loans, et cetera, et cetera. It's hard to get a practice there. So I'm like, I mean, we we have the vets to deal with it, but they have to be used efficiently. And this was kind of my practice manager and I, as we were getting our, got a full-time tech. She's like, I think you need another doctor. I think you need another doctor. Um, we got the tech and I'm and all of a sudden we're like, no, we don't. That has taken such a burden off of me that I can manage my time well. And I know on my large ammo friend side, I don't think techs are utilized near enough. And even on my small ammo friends, most of them are not utilizing their techs enough. And I mean, part of it, I enjoy drawing blood. It's just, you know, fun. <laughs> so I jump to that. Um, and I'm like, no, if I go do the doctor stuff, the tech can handle that. So some of it is framing my mind too. Uh, not that I won't jump in and draw blood, but I can I can diagnose a few more things while they're getting the work done for me. 
at least for the moment, that's working at my practice, but especially for young vets coming out, don't use your text because a lot of them has experience that can you can use to become a vet, better vet and they'll help you. So yeah, that's a few things that I, I think I'm kind of where you are with this. Is it a, is it really a shortage or is it where what people want and how we're utilizing our own staff and stuff? But, yeah, I think coming out of COVID a little bit, and of course the whole labor market is tough, is we're probably a lot more receptive to utilizing our our staff okay. and and being more efficient just because you know we want to get clients in and we you know I'd say this generation of you know veterinarians they want to have a life you know so you don't want to be writing your notes at nine o'clock at night and, yeah. and getting way behind <laughs> um, and so um, if you're focused on wait this is you know I should be doing you know surgery diagnosing prescribing get my notes done. Um, everything yeah. else, you know, because time after time, what I see is the the lay team, you know, it's six, seven o'clock, whatever time <laughs> quitting time is. Um, mm -hmm. They go and the doctors, you know, have a lot of stuff to do. So um, I think you a lot of times just have to have real focus and tough skin and be, wait a minute, I got to do my doctor's work yeah. And, yeah. and I need to form a strong team and if you have that team support um, you know and again the culture that they want that doc to be done so they can get home to the family or get to this soccer game or whatever you know yeah. they don't want you doing that stuff it's like hey let us yeah. take this and it just makes empowering them makes their position you know that much um, more enjoyable as well um, and, and I think there is, I mean, it's uh, to keep going in the profession, there always has to be that relationship between staff and vet and client. And I think the client side has to realize, too, maybe there's some changes, you know, uh, maybe we won't be doing walk-in appointments and, you know, whatever the changes might be. Or uh, as I've been arguing with some of my large animal uh, clients that I'm going to need you to haul in. I, I can do the work but I need you to use the trailers that you have and stuff like that. And I, I think some that might be on the client side, working with the vets as they make a schedule. So it's appropriate for work-life balance and seeing as many pets as possible. Um, Cause I think sometimes vets forget about one aspect or another, we have to fix ourselves or we have to fix the clients or we have to fix the business, but it's usually a relationship between all of them, I think. So I don't, that's just how I kind of look at things, but I don't know if that makes sense or not. <laughs> no, it does. It's, you know, it is a, there's a lot of stakeholders, I think, in, you know, what we do. And I do some presentations on, you know, the profitable practice and what, you know, who that impacts, you know, who those stakeholders are, you know, and it, it trickles down to a lot of different ways in terms of how it benefits the community, the team members, the pet care, and so on and yeah. so forth. And I think it's, you know, just gets back to what you're saying is it is a relationship, you know, between, you know, all the stakeholders in that practice. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I guess we'll have vets in the future. We're not going to die off. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe artificial intelligence will continue to <laughs> keep playing more of a role, hopefully in a positive way. Um, but uh, there, you know, there's a lot of big, you know, big changes coming up for sure. And I, I think they could be exciting changes too, because I like seeing where the profession goes, and it's it's fun to see how we evolve. I'm sure we'll make some mistakes, but I, I think overall we're a better profession than we were. 30, 40, 50, 100 years ago, <laughs> you know, depending on how far you want to go back. Yeah, I have a few of my uh, older time vet buddies that, you know, lament a little bit of the past and, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're happy with their, you know, one doctor practices and shabby, you know, facility and just, you know, that, you know, being that community fixture. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, a lot of different shades of veterinary medicine and 
Um, and I think that's a good good part that it's uh, we got some good diversity right now. Yeah, and I think too there's a change in the, you know, you were a community fixture. You know the the one of the doctors I worked with going through vet school and stuff. He was the community fixture. He was there, and that was perfect for him. Um, and but culture has changed some from, uh, you know, he came out on the GI bill and, you know, so it, it was a different world too. And, you know, we, we have different, uh, but I guess I'm a millennial. So we have different wants, desires, um, and how we want to live our life. So I think that that is something to consider when things are changing because change isn't always a bad word. It's just how it is. Yes, for sure. Other uh, any other words you or anything else you want to touch on before we kind of wrap up or yeah I like I said I'm optimistic for the profession there's um, there are challenges for sure um, and I think there are you know some good solutions going forward I mean we talk a little bit about the group aspect. And I think um, what it's done is create a lot more opportunities, better compensation, better facilities. You know, so there's more capital. And and the other part of the supply and demand aspect, frankly, is boy, the the public now I think is like sees us in a sense, and maybe in a different light in terms of wow. These guys are important. I can't, you know, getting into the veterinarian, you know, it's yeah. hard. And so I think the change with the, um, as you refer to millennials and, you know, the generational changes and today's new pet owner, they want to take the best care of their pets and they, you know, will do so given the opportunity. Um, and so, Again, I think finding ways to help budget out care can make a big difference. But I think overall, the groups have led to a higher level of medicine, partially even if you go back to like when I was at Banfield, they, you know, people didn't um, appreciate them in a sense a lot of times because they had some really rigorous, you know, uh, protocols and stuff but boy the quality of medicine because you know they had one name with 700 clinics or whatever at the time and yeah, you know yeah. if you had an anesthetic death there you know that was a you know would bring down you know a lot of the group so i think it's really um helped with the mentoring and the quality of medicine oh, yeah. and you know for a lot of people hey you might go and do a three to five year stint at uh this group or that group, and maybe you'll stay forever and grow into another position or a lot of groups you could have some co-ownership, um, but it may also be the building block of saying, hey, I'm one of the five or 10% that, you know, really would like to go out and own my own practice. So I think it's going to be a healthy mix. And I think if we, um, you know, play our cards right, we can accomplish a lot here over the next decade in terms of up in compensation and the quality of care, um, I think keeps, you know, going up, but we have to make sure that we don't have a two tier system where only mm. clients with, you know, sufficient funds can, you know, yeah. can pay, you know, in some ways I think, you know, everybody's been so busy for the most part, you get a little arrogant. It's like, well, if that client can't pay <laughs> the next ones, you know, yeah, yeah. I got enough clients coming in, so I'm not going to consider, you know, either offering a wellness plan or pushing pet insurance. Uh, and so I think there's, you know, when you look how important pets are in our society now um, and, you know, social media plays a piece in it, um, I think we do have a really important role in, you know, of course, you know, taking care of people and, and their pets. And so looking at innovative ways to do that, I think mm -hmm. is significant. So, that we can be profitable, pay our people appropriately, and still take care of the vast majority of pets. So, yeah, yeah. It, so challenges, good challenges, a lot of great people in the profession. I think the big thing is um, making sure people don't slip through the cracks, which can happen, and they, you know, can get uh, 
disenchanted with you know what's going on in the profession but there's a lot more focus on i think wellness care for our team members and so Mm -hmm. um those are all you know healthy things so it will be interesting to see what the next 10 years brings but as you said um i think our you know place in society is you know is up there that we're you know, well respected and and uh, a lot of demand for our services. We need to be careful, you know, not to you know I think abuse that respect in terms of just taking, you know, mm-hmm. people for granted and figure out ways where you know also clients aren't in a scenario where, you know, even the emergency clinics turn them away because they you know can't get them. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, so, yeah, yeah. Definitely some local, uh, some of the things you said are things that, you know, just in the last week or two have been issues that we've been trying to deal with and help people out. So, so yeah, I, no, I agree. I think it's, uh, it's an exciting time, uh, but that doesn't mean it's not some hard work for everyone around VetWise to get through it. Thank you for being on the podcast. This is Dr. Jeff Rothstein and um, read his articles. Uh, that's how I got to know him. Um, and I found those very helpful. Take a look at the MVP and I will. Um, yeah, yeah. So MVP, Mission Veterinary Partners, it's, you know, again, there's obviously a number of groups out there, but um, um, obviously I'm a little biased, but one of my, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in terms of it being, but uh, I think us and a lot of the other groups are you know, really looking after the future of the profession, trying to, you know, do the right thing and, you know, be good caretakers for both our people, clients and pets. And that's, um, you know, I think it's really important to so many people in the profession. So I think there's a healthy mix of the different groups out there. Some have, will, you know, different take on things than others, but there's a lot of good support for the profession. And I think, again, some of these, you know, bigger groups that have, you know, the capital to make sure we're, you know, mentoring properly and compensating appropriately and providing great benefits are, you know, all really positive things. So just a good, good mix right now, but challenges ahead. And I think we've got a lot of great minds to help uh, push us forward. Excellent. Well, thank you again. I'm Dr. Nathan. Thanks for listening. I hope our discussions are valuable to you and aid in giving perspective. If you want to contact us, please reach out to theveterinarypodcast at gmail.com. You can find a complete list of the podcast episodes on SoundCloud. If you find this information helpful and want more content, please join our Patreon patreon.com slash the veterinary podcast and don't forget to follow our facebook page facebook.com slash the veterinary podcast as always thanks for listening and i hope this information is helpful to you if you do find it helpful please like it share it so other people may find it helpful as well